Bad Cats is the game that I've had the longest in my lineup and it's one of my early restorations and it's probably a family favorite and it's really fun to play and the call outs are great and it's a simple game but it has that it factor and it's just a blast and it's really sad to know that Barry passed on and he'll be remembered by his games and by his family and the people who, who loved him and I'll probably play a game tonight. Rest in peace, Barry. His name is Barry Owsler. He grew up in the Chicago area, and he entered into the pinball industry with Williams in the 1970s. He started that on the game floor working the assembly line, and as time went by, he learned more and more about the engineering aspect of the industry, eventually making his way into design. His first game was Phoenix in 1978. He remained with Williams for the next 18 years, making more memorable games such as the first game with Speech, Gorgar, then Jungle Lord, Barracora, Joust, Space Shuttle, which can arguably be stated as the game that saved pinball at that time, Comet, the Pinbot series, Fire, Bad Cats, Harley Davidson, Doctor Who, Brimstoker's Dracula, Dirty Harry, and finally, Junkyard. In 96, he was laid off from Williams while Junkyard was in production. He didn't know it at the time, but Junkyard would be his last game that he would get to see people play. During his time away from pinball, Barry had a battle with cancer, which he eventually won. More time had passed and he did some work with Highway Pinball. Then he was hired by Deep Root. Barry was working on six different games with Deep Root, including Goonies. But unfortunately, the company went bankrupt before his games could go into production. It was shortly after Deep Root's collapse that Barry found a new home with American Pinball as a designer. He was already working on his first game when Barry had an episode that caused him to go into the hospital for a lengthy stay. That is when he found out that his cancer had returned and spread. Barry began his chemotherapy, but this treatment had an adverse reaction, causing him to be hospitalized on February 20th. Barry passed away the next day. Now this is where I'm going to go off script to go over basically my time with Barry and stories. And I've already implemented the last time I personally saw him into this video right there at the end when he was signing Ed Vanderveen's Translite for his Doctor Who. Now I've owned a few of Barry's games. I want to say my very first game from him was actually Jackbot. One of my first games to utilize for showing people how to do something when it comes to pinball and it was removing Mylar. And I think the video after that actually when it comes to Jackbot was me showing off the restoration I did on it. And that was back in February of 2017. I've owned a Hurricane a couple of times. I thoroughly enjoy his games and I've been meaning to add one of his games to my collection and I'm happy to say that I just recently obtained it and that's the Doctor Who that I just um, as of recently announced that will be my next restoration project. Barry had a great sense of humor. For what little I do know about him, I knew that. From what I've heard from others is that he was also an excellent cook. He was a regular visitor to Texas Pinball Festival. Uh, one particular time, I remember my, my buddy Lonnie was playing his um, newly restored Harley Davidson machine and he was just testing it out before he released it to the public. And Barry and his wife Kathy were standing behind him and Barry was admiring the job that he had done on this Harley Davidson pinball machine. But the funny thing is, is that Lonnie didn't know that that was the designer for the game that he just restored. I'm guessing he knew the designer's name, but never actually knew him and what he looked like. So whenever you got to imagine that while you're playing your newly restored game, this supposed random guy walks up next to you compliments you on how nice the game looks and then asks you if it's okay if he can sign it <laughs> so like I said Lonnie didn't know that that was Barry Owersler so he was taken back by some 
random person asking if they could sign his game. So that was pretty funny. I had to shake my head about that one because I was like, I was like, oh, dude, that's pretty funny. That was one story that uh, about Barry that I thought was pretty funny that I thought I'd share with you guys. Now, meeting him while I was at Deep Root was also another memorable moment for me because um, whereas the other designer that was there, John Papaduke, Barry Owsler was much more interactive with the rest of us and wanted to walk around and converse. And um, he seemed to be excited about what they were working on. And he himself was working on six different games. He just couldn't get an engineer to start making the game. That was the that was the hard part, is that he had all these ideas and he had everything ready to go. They just couldn't get away from working on Raza to start working on his games. Talking to him, he wanted nothing more than to get his games out to you guys. He was super excited to be designing again and uh, wanted people to enjoy his games again. And those that have worked with Barry in the past should be able to vouch for this by me saying that he was a workhorse. He, when it comes to like designing a game, he would hit the ground running, get a game built, designed, and ready to go in a matter of a few weeks if needed be. And so whenever it was announced that, you know, Deep Root was going under, I couldn't help but think about him. And mainly only him. So I guess there was a little bit of a, a personal connection there at that point because I, I wanted him to come back into the hobby. I wanted him to get his games out. And uh, for what he was wanting, basically, was taken away from him. So I was pretty excited to see that he was getting on an American pinball. I was like, sweet, it's going to be a while till we see a game from him, but you know what? At least now we're finally going to get another Barry game. He's going to be able to be with the company that's actually going to be able to manufacture a game. And I wanted him to be happy and to see the look on people's faces once again as they play something that he put together. And now it looks like we'll probably never get to play a new Barry game again. Unless... A company out there can obtain one of his designs that he was working on at Deep Root. I don't see why that would be impossible. If they could take one of his games, re-theme it if you have to, and launch it as a Barry Owsler design. That was one thing about him is that for his designs, he wanted theme integration. That was his most prominent starting point was what is my theme i need to work around the theme and sadly it seems like a lot of times that is definitely not the way it's done today when it comes to manufacturers and the games that we see not all the time at least i just want to say thank you to all of you out there that contributed on this video by submitting a picture or a short clip of your barry game he will be sorely missed but at least we all have a piece of Barry to remember him by. Take care of those games, guys.